just announced the discovery of new fossils that might belong to this tiny ancient human species. What do these new finds tell us about these mysterious people? Well, first we need to go back and understand the context and the discovery of Homo floresiensis. Flores is a small island in Indonesia. It's part of a nearly 800 mile long chain known as the Sunda Islands. It's well known by tourists for its multiple volcanoes, crater lakes, and coral reefs. The most significant archaeological site on the island of Flores is Liang Bois Cave. Excavations here began back in the 1950s. They were pioneered by Father Theodore Verhoeven, a Catholic priest. He found clay pottery, stone tools, and even several Stone Age burials within the cave. In 2001, an international team of scientists resumed the hunt. They dug down, deep down, into the unexcavated layers of the cave, and 19 feet down, beneath the surface, a workman struck a bone. It was the top of a human skull. And it was so small that at first the scientists and the workmen all thought that it must be a child. But as they removed the sediment from around the skull, they exposed it and they realized that this was no child. The bones of the skull had already fused like that of an adult. And the wisdom teeth were erupted. This was no child, this was an adult, and yet it was tiny. The brain size was comparable to that of some chimpanzees. But the wrinkles and folds of the brain were very human-like. They found much of the rest of the skeleton too, its upper and lower limb bones, its hands and its feet, its pelvis, and its shoulder blade. And these all indicated that it was a strange creature, only about three and a half feet tall. It had relatively long arms, compared to its legs. And they named it Homo floresiensis, but it turned out not to be unique. This wasn't just a one-off. At this same cave, they ended up finding 13 more individuals, all comparable or even smaller in size. Now this discovery sparked a heated debate among scientists. This was a very early human fossil find. Radiometric dates of the fossils placed them between 100,000 years and 60,000 years in age. And there were so many questions. Was this actually a legitimate tiny human species? Or alternatively, could these be people who had some sort of developmental disease and didn't grow properly? Did these people descend from early African hominids or did they develop from Homo erectus in Asia? How did these people even get to Flores in the first place? Now there are two main theories regarding the origin of Homo floresiensis, and I just want to describe them to you very briefly here. Firstly, you can think of Homo floresiensis as a very ancient hominid. One perspective suggests that Homo floresiensis is a descendant of very early hominids, such as Homo habilis. This idea posits that these very early African hominids, such as Homo habilis, migrated out to Eastern Asia and populated these islands. And therefore, there wasn't really much of a decrease in size that was needed because those very early African hominids were already quite small. And this theory explains why some of these very primitive traits, like those strange limb proportions, appear in Homo floresiensis. The second theory posits that Homo floresiensis is instead a dwarf. It would suggest that Homo erectus, what's once spanned across the entire old world, Africa, Asia, and Europe, went down into these Indonesian islands and adapted to life on islands by shrinking its body and brain size. The larger a creature is, the more energy it needs, but on islands, there's not always a ton of food available. So perhaps Homo erectus lived on islands and as a result, uh, basically face these evolutionary pressures to become smaller over time. So those are the two theories that most scientists would adhere to. Either it is an ancient relic of an African species, or it is a dwarf of Homo erectus. For quite a while, Homo floresiensis was known only from that one site, Liang Bois Cave. However, in 2016, we got some fascinating news. Scientists excavating at a site about 50 miles to the east of Liang Bois had uncovered some tiny human fossils. 
this included a little piece of a mandible. So here I have the original Homo floresiensis jaw that they found. And this is just a little scrap from the right side of the jaw. So it kind of fits right about there on that jaw. So they found this little scrap of the jaw and six isolated teeth at this site. And all of these bones and these teeth seem to have some affinities to Homo floresiensis. This is the site of Mata Menge. This is an open air fossil site. And the fossils here were found in a sandstone layer. Many of the animal fossils found at the site were abraded, so scratched or rubbed, indicating that they rolled along the bottom of a stream. And the bottom of the sandstone deposit was all kind of bumpy and lumpy, indicating that it was eroded as well. So this is probably some sort of deposit from a creek or a stream or a river or something like that. But what's most fascinating is that radiometric dating of this sandstone layer dated it to 700,000 years in age. So this uh, deposit is significantly older than the remains from Liang Bois Cave. And now on to the new stuff. Just earlier this week, a paper in the journal Nature Communications described three new fossils that were found at the site of Mata Menj. These included a piece of an arm bone, a canine tooth, so one of those pokey teeth in your mouth, and a third molar, or a wisdom tooth. So let's go through them one by one. This is a fragment of an upper arm bone called the humerus. And this is what your humerus looks like. The humerus fits into your body like that, and it stretches from your shoulder down to your elbow. Now, when we compare these in size, what you'll see is that the Mata Menge fossil material is a little smaller than our modern day humerus. But that's not all. We can also compare it to Homo floresiensis. This is the humerus of that skeleton that was found at Liang Bua Cave. When we hold them over each other, what we'll see is that this new fossil material from Mata Menge is actually even a little smaller than this Homo floresiensis humerus. Now what can we say about who it belonged to? Well, scientists compared it to many other different fossil humeri, and they found that it was very unlike those of Australopithecines. Those are those upright walking African apes, such as Lucy. They tended to have a flaring kind of edge to the humerus that forms kind of this ridge that sticks out here. We don't see that in this bone. They also did a cross-sectional shape analysis. So they CT scanned it and looked at the outline of the bone. And guess who it turned out to be most similar to? That's right, that humerus from Liang Bua Cave. So that supports the conclusion that maybe these are both Homo floresiensis. Next, we come to the teeth. Now, I don't want to bore you with the details, but suffice it to say that these teeth are very small. They are actually smaller than the known teeth of Homo floresiensis from Liang Bua Cave. However, in terms of shape, the particular cusps and anatomy of a crown, they believe that there are actually some similarities to Homo erectus. So, the paper argues that these three bones probably belong to the ancestors of Homo floresiensis. They argue that this ancestral population was already very small, as evidenced by the size of its teeth and its arm bone. However, they think that it did not yet acquire some of the specific traits of the teeth that made Homo floresiensis unique from Homo erectus. So they support this dwarfism idea. Remember we talked about those two models? They think that it's a dwarf, that it is this Homo erectus that adapted to life on islands by becoming smaller. Are the Mata Menja hominins related to Homo floresiensis? Well, that's a difficult question to answer because you just don't have that much fossil material, right? Those three little scraps of bone and teeth that I just showed you are a significant part of the whole collection of fossils from Mata Menja, so there's just not very much to go on. But those similarities, particularly of that humerus, the arm bone, how that Mata Menja humerus was very similar to the one from Liang Bua, that is Homo floresiensis, those similarities seem to indicate to me that maybe there is some sort of continuity going on here. And the teeth and jaws might support that conclusion as well. Now what about size? I think it is perhaps a little bit too much of a coincidence to have two very small hominins on this small island together. 
Now they are separated by a bit of time according to the radiometric dating, but I think it's not a coincidence that these two very small populations are on this same island together. It's very likely that they are connected in some way. However, I am not yet convinced that Homo floresiensis is a dwarf version of Homo erectus, which is what the authors of this paper suggested, remember? They looked at these newly found teeth and they found some similarities to Homo erectus. And so they're suggesting that Homo floresiensis is this Homo erectus that adapted to life on islands by becoming smaller. I'm not convinced by that yet because Homo floresiensis shows some very weird skeletal features that seem to fit more in with it being a very early, early member of the genus Homo, more related to those early hominins that are found in Africa. But that's a very open question. We don't really know exactly who Homo floresiensis is related to. And there's really a lot of research yet to be done into this idea that Homo floresiensis could be some sort of pathological um, scenario. I, I think that's less likely because of how many individuals we found now, uh, like the 14 at Liang Bois. So newly found fossils at the site of Mata Menge support earlier theories that Homo floresiensis goes way back that very early small-bodied hominins lived on the island of Flores and may have been ancestral to later populations such as Homo floresiensis at the site of Liang Bua Cave. I hope you found this all as fascinating as I did. If you want to see more videos like this one, please make sure to click that subscribe button and that bell icon so you get a notification whenever I release a video. Also, let me know what you thought of this discovery in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.